Tony, hey, welcome, welcome to Cleveland. Uh, talk about yourself as, as a football player. What do you do best since we all don't get to see all the time? Um, I fly to the ball. I mean, I'm one of these guys. I'm one of those guys that I'm an ambassador of hard working when I get on the football field. I get out there and put my all this no matter what I'm doing. I mean, if I'm going to the ball, I'm trying to get interception or if I'm, I mean, spilling a puller or forcing a puller, I'm going to give you my all. And that's how I play the game. Thank you, Jeff. Tom Weathers is next. Thank you, Rob. Hey, Tony. So you go from Arizona to West Virginia and you play in the Big 12 where offenses are wide open and teams are scoring at an unbelievable rate. How much did that help your, your cover skills? And was that, was that part of your decision to go from Arizona to, to WVU? Yeah, that and it, just, it was a climate change. I mean, I'm going, I'm, I'm there in Cleveland now. You know, I'm from Las Vegas, um, where <laughs> it's always hot. So, I mean, I, I dealt with the cold for a whole season in West Virginia. I met a lot of guys from Cleveland. So, I mean, just just moving to West Virginia was a good thing all in all because I met a lot of new people and I got I got used to a different climate and a different type of football in the Pac-12. And how much do you pride yourself on that versatility to be able to play, you know, outside, inside, cover tight ends, running backs, whatever it takes? 100%. I mean, I feel like I can play any position on a defense. I mean, if you needed me to gain 70 more pounds, I can gain to play D-line. I mean, I, I'm a football head. I mean, I can lose 30 pounds to play corner. Whatever you need me to do, I'll do. And that's what I'm going to tell Coach as soon as I step foot in the building. Thank you, man. Thanks, Tom. We'll go to Nate Orrick. Tony, congratulations. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering, uh, with your versatility and with the Browns also picking uh, Jeremiah Usu koromoa do you see yourself in him? Do you see his game in yours? Do you think that you guys uh, have a lot in common as players? No, for sure. I mean, we're both athletic linebackers, but that's what the game is changing to. I mean, so it was a great pick, great two picks for uh, our, our staff, I mean, our coaches. I feel like it helps us out a lot um, with having two more linebackers that can run with those receivers and running backs uh, on the defense. So the type of linebackers that you guys are, um, what advantage do you think that gives defenses when it comes to dealing with the evolution of the other side of the ball on offense and, and the types of quarterbacks and other players you have to face? Um, like I said before, I mean, I, I feel like it's just that we're very well-rounded and that we're full three-down linebackers. Myself, I feel like I'm a three-down linebacker just because I can play in third down and I can go and widen out in coverage and jam a slot or cover a slot if I have to. And I can also play in the box. That's what I've done in college. So I'm all, I'm all ready to go. Thanks, Nate. Mary Kay Cabot, you're up. Yeah, Tony, can you just talk about uh, how grateful are you that there is a team like the Browns that is kind of, you know, jumping on this early, the wave of the future sort of modern day linebacker and really appreciating and valuing guys like like, like you and Jeremiah? Um, it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed that I mean, I, everybody called me undersized or whatever you want to say about it, but I don't think of myself like that. And I don't, I for sure don't play like that. I never will play like I'm undersized. So, I mean, I love the fact that coaches are buying in. I mean, the whole league is eventually going to have to buy into these passing uh, coverage linebackers because the league's getting faster and it's becoming more and more passing game. Have you already thought about, have you envisioned and imagined, you know, going up against, Patrick Mahomes and, and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey this year? <laughs> I've done that all year. All these This whole last two days were hardest two days of my life. And all I'm thinking about is who I'm playing against and what quarterback I'm going to play with and what guys I'm going to have to tackle. So I'm ready to go, though. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. Tony Grossi, you're up. Hey, Tony, you're from Las Vegas. You, you played three years at Arizona. <laughs> who voluntarily moves to West Virginia. What's the real story on why you transferred? Um, like I said, um, it was one with the transfer thing. I wanted to, I graduated from Arizona, the Pac-12 minor how to play football. So when I, when I decided to transfer, I took it upon myself to go somewhere and think about going somewhere where it would change, it'd be a, a change of environment. I changed everything for me, and I didn't have family out there because I've always been close to home. I mean, in Arizona, I'm five hours away from family. So this is my first time I'm actually far, far, far away. 
and I had to do everything by myself and it developed me as a person. Wow. So, um, boy, if somebody out West, if uh, the Cardinals would have drafted you, you would have said, oh, well. <laughs> I mean, it's close to home, but hey, I, I do love Cleveland. I'm telling you that. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, Tony. Scott Patrick has our next question. Hey, Tony, are you still in West Virginia or are you back in Vegas? What's that? Are you in West Virginia or are you in Vegas? I'm in Las Vegas. Right now? Um, yes, sir. Have you been training there or just for the draft? I'm uh, training here. Okay. And what's it like? I mean, I'm a big fan of Vegas. What's it like growing up there? Um, you know, do you love going back there? Oh, definitely. I mean, me being from Vegas, I don't really get into – what the tourists and like you said, you're not from here. So people that's not from here get into when they come out here because it's like regular to me. So, I mean, it's just, I'm, I, I, I treat it like home. I mean, I work out every day. I mean, occasionally you go to the casino. We, I feel like we got the best food spots on earth out here. So I love my city. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Nate Oracle, go to you. Hey, Tony, just to uh, read in a little bit of your bio, it says that you really came in and tried to, you know, establish yourself as a leader uh, in West Virginia. How important was that to you? And how do you think that can help you, you know, obviously transition to the NFL? If, you know, you're going to be a rookie and there will be veteran leaders, but, you know, just a change of scenery and adapting. How do you think that'll help you? Um, I've always been able to adapt to change. And I feel like uh, the leadership characteristics and everything I've learned on how to be a leader, I feel like I can – also come in and help I mean I, I know like you said it's uh veterans that's been there that are leaders already but I mean in my opinion you can learn from anybody I mean I learn I learn things from people younger than me all the time so I'm gonna go in and be a learning sponge and when I can't speak up or when it comes a time that I have to speak up or be a leader I'm gonna do so did you have a feeling heading into the draft the Browns could be a landing spot did you have a lot of interaction with them believe it or not yes I did. I, I mean, my coaches called me about it from uh, college, and uh, my agent told me a lot about it. So I mean, th it was it was a, it was a surprise. I mean, just the call the call was the biggest moment of my life. Thanks, Nate. Marla Ridenauer, go to you. Yeah, Tony. Who who gave who was on the other end of that call? Um, it was a couple coaches. I think actually the whole staff. <laughs> And I'm just curious when, because of your, you know, wide ranging skills, did you admire other players besides linebackers when you were a kid? Oh, definitely. I mean, I've watched, I was more into the skill players, to be honest, like growing up until like I really turned into a strict linebacker. Then I started watching linebackers, but I was more into the guys that move faster, like, uh, like the receivers or the slots or the corners, like, and my dad and all my family were defensive backs. So I've always watched the skill players, like those, those skill players rather than the mid skill, like the tight ends and linebackers. And is it, I mean, you talked a little bit about kind of being the new wave of player, but is that almost exciting to be, you know, you feel like you're sort of creating something new here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not even a new thing. I mean, it's a lot of linebackers. You got Devin White, who's already been doing it. Um, it's a lot of guys who's been in there doing doing this uh, new breed of linebacker, the hybrid linebacker thing. So it's not necessarily a new wave, in my opinion. It's just everybody's now doing the same thing. People are people are catching on. 